Bro, what kind of challenges does a guy like Giannis present when you see him on the court? Uh, big time challenge. Big time challenge. His ability to uh, get the ball off the glass, push, facilitate, uh, put pressure on your defense. Um, but I think what a lot of people are uh, misunderstanding about how great Giannis is is how they put that team together. They put that team together around him that fits his attributes perfectly. It allows him to get space because they keep so many shooters out on the floor at the same time. It allows him to get downhill because you, you have to stop him at the point of attack and you also have to get out to, to you know, sh sharpshooters. So um, they did a great job of constructing that, uh, that, that team, putting uh, the, the pieces around him, like I said, that best fits his game perfectly. They won that game in December in large part because he got hot from the outside. Um, if he does that consistently, the words, what type of weapon he could be? Well, I mean, that's, that's with anybody. It's not, it's not just with Giannis, that's with anybody. If you allow someone to get hot at something that they don't do very often, that's just, that's everything, right? The same as Michael Jordan against the Blazers when he hit, what, six in the first half, and you just tip your hat. It would be the same, you know, myself, I'm shooting a lot of threes, people just kind of like tip their hat, you know, because you're trying to make them do things that they, I won't say that they don't want to do, but you play the percentages. So, you know, if a guy like Giannis is making threes, um, you know, don't say you, you want to give that up, but you'd rather see contested threes over dunks, layups, free throws. You said after last, uh, you said after last game that this time of year, you generally just change your demeanor and you like to have a talk with your team. You haven't done it yet. Is that something that you do every year? Or is that something that you want to do, especially with so many good cases? Um, I think the the timing will you know, dictate itself. You know, um, you know, it's just getting close to March Madness. You know, um, you know, we obviously know the playoffs is a, you know around the corner. But you know, for me, it's just my approach. It's the way I approach the game. The way I you know approach my career and uh, look forward to the you know the challenge of you know today, which was was great, um, and also for the challenge tomorrow. You know, so. You know, just kind of just continue to build a great habits going into the postseason, but also not understanding, I mean, not disrespecting the process of, you know, what we can do today, which we, which we got better today. Well, LeBron, obviously the championships are the main thing, but where, where do you put... Say that again? Said so obviously championships are the main thing, but where do you put regular season MVP in the equation of things that drive you and motivate you? Um, it's never, it's never motivated me. Regular season MVP has never motivated me. Um, to be the best, to be the best to ever play the game has motivated me and has resulted in me being able to be league MVP a couple times. But I've never gone into the season saying, okay, league MVP is what I want to be. I've gone into the season saying, okay, I want to be the MVP of this team. I want to be the best player in the world. And um, and how I approach my game every day, how I take care of my body every day has resulted in things like that. How do you evaluate that? What do you mean? If your goal is just to be the best, how do you No, evaluate? that's not my only goal. No, no, I, oh. I, didn't, I didn't mean that it was your own. Uh -huh. When you say you, you want to be the best player in the world, and that uh -huh. is, like, MVP is not what you would strive yeah. for. When you evaluate yourself, how do you, how do you, how do you as far that? As far as what, how do I evaluate myself? I, how do you know if you succeeded in that? And being the best in the world? Um, it's just, uh, I think it's the way that I, the games that I play, um, you know, my leadership, um, you know, how my teammates uh, feed off, you know, my presence and feed off my word. Um, it's so much more than, than for me being a, a, the best player in the world than just going out and, you know, doing it on the floor. And I think uh, I think leadership has a lot to do with it. I'm um, having a command, um, uh, holding yourself accountable, uh, allowing others to hold you hold you accountable as well. Um, so it's I, I have a lot of tears to, you know, trying to be you know the, you know, the best player in the world. Um, you know, it's not just about basketball side. Is this on par with what you were expecting of yourself entering the season, or are there things that you think you've done even better than you anticipated? Um, coming to the season, I didn't know I would, I would be the point guard of the team. Um, it was it was discussed. Um, you know, it was talked about a little bit in the off season, but it was never um, you know set in place if I would be the you know the primary ball handler um, for this ball club. So, um, you know, me um, doing that is. Um, I don't want to say it's surprising, but it's been, you know, it's been a challenge. It's something I haven't done since my rookie year. Um, and that was only like a half of a season, uh, maybe even not, not even that long. So um, that's something I've had to challenge myself and change my game in that, in that form. 
um, you know, making sure that I continue to get everybody involved, you know, set the offense up, set the tempo, uh, put guys in position, which I've done a lot in my career, but it's a lot different when you're actually the point guard. Um, if you're a point guard, you would understand. If not, then you're like, what is he talking about? He's always done this, um, but it's totally different. Um, but, you know, just, you know, that, that, that's been the, one of the, the biggest uh, changes for me. Um, you know, this year. What is the pride factor to continue to be in the conversation as one of the best players in the game with people who are a decade younger than you? Um, I mean, the only way that um, that I'm continuing to be in the conversation is through the grace of God, one. Um, you know, through the way, uh, you know, I've always respected the game. I believe when you give to the game, the game gives back to you. Um, and then me just taking care of my body and putting in the work. Um, you know, I take care of my body. I know it's my temple. I know without it, I can't do anything. I can't be on the floor. I can't be at my best. Um, and then just continue to have an open mind about how I can continue to get better. I want to continue to get better and, um, and, and see how far or how high this ceiling can go in my career, which I've stated before. So, um, you know, I, I don't look for, you know, I don't like, you know, I don't watch TV shows and things of that nature and, and, and sports radio and all that talk shows and things of that nature. But, um, you know, for my teammates, it's more important that my teammates look at me um, and, and they know what they're going to get out of me every night and every day. And um, I just put that type of pressure on myself to know that I could be there for my teammates. I realize this a little. You could use as a team to see where you are kind of stacked up. I'm going to be the best team in the West, but playing, you know, the Bucks and the Clippers on a weekend like this. Nah, I think it's, I think it's going to be it's a weekend where you can just be like, wow, let's get competitive. It's going to be two great competitive games. But to know where we stack up, we know who, where we, we know where we are. We know who we are. Uh, we know we stack up against the best in the, in the, in the league, um, no matter who it, who it is, uh, win, lose, or draw. But then the competitive side, you know, you know Friday night in Staples, you know, uh, Sunday afternoon in Staples, you know, you, you just know it's going to have, uh, you know, against the two of the best teams in the world, you know, you're going to have, uh, you know, it's going to be a good uh, good competition. Last two questions, please. A little, 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 little off topic. Like, like, one, two. When, when you, um, you have a big week like, in terms of – Politically, Super Tuesday, things like that. How much do you guys talk about that kind of stuff? In what? Or in the locker room? Like what? Event, you know, national events like Super Tuesday, voting, you know, elections, things like that. Is that um, no, nah, it, it comes. I think we we talk about a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that's going on in the world, we, we kind of discuss. Uh, you know, but you know, some of it is more discussed than others. Is it hard to participate in elections when you're playing? Um, I don't want to say that. Um, you know. You know, it's hard to keep up with it on a daily, on a day-to-day, -day, um, you know, basis for sure. That, that's that's you know challenging, but um, if you want information, you can get it. Being a leader, I know this game is a regular season game Friday, but is there anything different you tell the guys like for a game like this against top team on the East? Anything different? Different approach? Nah, we got a better on ball club. There's no need. For, I don't need to say anything. I mean, it's the number one team in the league that we're going against on our home floor. There's nothing. Um, you know, what's known don't need to be said. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.